Um, before we get to Jim Cramer and his uh, yeah, his breakdown on the chances of recession, I want to watch the uh, the the gas prices uh, gas price gouging. That's uh, the Climate Town video. Who actually controls the gas prices? Climate Town uh, made a really good right. video the on this, so well, let's take a look. Well, well, well. Gas prices are high again. That's right. The price of gas is higher than it used to be. And we all know the reason why. There's one man who gets to set the global price of gasoline, pee, I'll be and back. that guy is the President of the United States. Thanks a lot, Mr. President. <laughs> so insane. Hey, sorry about that guy. He's just mad about high gas prices and has a deep misunderstanding of what causes them to happen. As you might expect, gasoline is- My 75 year old grandmother just reshared your tweet on Facebook based? What the fuck, what tweet? Sometimes forget the Facebook exists. Not right. just some kind of mysterious juice that comes out of the end of an enchanted snake. It's a trillion dollar industry. There's some fucking paperwork involved. In fact, there's a whole government agency called the Energy Information Administration that tracks exactly what contributes to the price of gasoline, and there's basically four factors. And not to spoil anything for you, but how much America's president wants gas to cost is not one of them. Let's give it a look-see. Family feud style. In fourth place, contributing Kapowski. to about 14% of the price of gasoline is distribution and marketing. This includes the price you pay to get gas from the refinery to the gas station, paying the people at the filling station, and advertising the incredible one-tenth of a cent discount you're getting on every gallon of gas. Fun fact, filling stations have one of the worst profit margins of any industry in the US, making an average profit of just five to seven cents per gallon of gas. These guys don't make their money on gas. Gas is just to get people in the door where they can make their real profit selling Funyuns and Big Gulps. In third place, with another 14% of the price of gas, is the cost of turning crude oil into sweet, sweet car juice, baby, which is fairly labor intensive and can also cost more depending on state regulations and corporate requirements. Again, the price of refining is fairly stable. So the only way to cut costs here is by appealing to the notoriously philanthropic nature of companies like ExxonMobil and BP and Shell. I'm, I'm being sarcastic. They love money. Those costs aren't coming down. In second place, making up about 16% of the price of gasoline are federal and state taxes and fees. That's the extra cost the federal and state government adds to gasoline to help pay for things like roads and bridges. And if you're thinking, hey, aren't America's roads and bridges absolutely falling apart? That might have something to do with the fact that the federal gas tax hasn't been raised since 1993. Now, state taxes are a contributing factor to variability across the U.S. California has higher gas prices because their state tax is one of the highest in the nation, plus they tack on some extra fees to try to account for the very real pollution that driving around creates. Which, you know, seems like a good thing to try to account for. And not for nothing, but the federal gasoline tax in European countries like Germany, the UK, and France, just the tax is $2.80 a gallon, which makes America's 18.4 cents a gallon, or even California's 51.1 cents a gallon, feel Which we literally voted for. We voted for an increase in gas taxes in this last election, not the primaries, obviously. Um... We personally voted for it so our fucking infrastructure be fixed. I advocated for it as well. And except, of course, our infrastructure hasn't been fixed, so I don't know what's going on there. But then again, also, California is very expensive. It's a massive fucking state. Uh, and, and so I do understand that, like, uh, that level of higher taxing is, even though it is literally nothing in comparison to a country that I grew up in, Turkey. Uh, don't know what the gas taxes are there, but I'll tell you that. I'll tell you this much: it is certainly way more expensive. Every fucking European country has a way higher fucking gas uh, uh, tax and also higher prices on gas than the United States of America. Kind of low in comparison, so they're not what's causing spikes or dips for the pinch at the pump. The pinch at the pump. The pinch at the pump. The pinch at the pumps. And in first place. With a commanding 10-year average of 56% of the price of gasoline is... <laughs> oil, baby! That's right, we're talking Texas tea! I'm talking about that rock gravy, black gold, tank top and spank juice, pipeline piss, the old French Kevin, the old hot chocolate for cars. <laughs> any way you slice it, the price of gasoline is basically just the global price of oil plus a handful of add-ons to get that oil to you. 
And if you're still not convinced, you skeptical son of a bitch, it's time to take a trip to Chart Town. Maybe that's the reason why prices for gas have internationally increased, regardless of what the fucking American government has to say or do about it. Obviously, OPEC is like still the main, um, you know, one of the main controllers of, of what this, uh, what the gas prices look like. Here we go. This is the price of crude oil, and this is the price of gasoline. And just for reference, here's a chart of the gas price versus tax, here's the gas price versus refinery costs, and here's the gas price versus distribution and marketing. Now which one of these things looks like it's got the most impact on daily gas prices? So since price volatility of gasoline is almost exclusively due to price volatility of oil, maybe we should talk about how oil prices work. Now in America, we do drill and refine a lot of our own oil. But since every man, woman, and child drives around here... Where were you going? To the gas station. <laughs> How come? Because I want have reasons. <laughs> and underinvesting in public transportation is It's called freedom, bitch. Look it up in a dictionary. Bet you don't even have one because you live in communist China where they don't have dictionaries a national pastime, we're forced to import about half the oil we use from other countries. But you know what, I'm sure that's not a lot. Holy hell, that's 9 million barrels of oil per year? Wait, that's per month? Wait, that's per day? And please don't let that wait that's per blank thing undermine your confidence in me. I actually wrote that into the script. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize that it's 9 million barrels of oil per day. And at 42 gallons a barrel, America imports 378 million gallons of oil from other countries every day, which to me seemed like a lot. So whenever a politician says they want America to be more energy independent. Energy independent. Energy independent. Energy independent. And then they shoot down laws that promote electric vehicles or minimum fuel standards, it really makes me wonder whether they understand how American energy independence works. Because importing millions of barrels of oil from other countries every day doesn't feel real independent. It almost feels like they use energy independence as a way to drill even more, despite the fact that we already have the opportunity to drill more than ever before, and yet they are still not fucking drilling more in an effort to uh, maintain the prices that currently benefit every every fucking person, maybe with the exception of like the gas station owners, on that, uh, on that three... Uh, on the Price is Right uh, uh, lineup that it showed uh, originally. To me. Especially when those other countries have a lot to say about how global oil markets should work. And when I say other countries, uh, I really mean the most powerful group of work friends on the planet, OPEC. This lighting is not gonna work. Mark. Okay, all the way back in 1960, a group of oil-rich countries, including Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Venezuela, and Saudi Arabia, got together and they formed OPEC. And if you thought the O stands for oil, you'd be wrong. I know, I thought that was a layup too. Probably oil producing, and then, I don't know. But it's actually the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And they got together and formed themselves into a literal cartel. And yep. just a quick note about cartels here. We usually only hear about cartels in episodes of NCIS, and it's usually just because some NCIS writer is trying to get out by five that day, and they need a shorthand for a group of people who's gonna cut you in half hot dog style if you try to touch their cocaine. It's also got a sort of cast of the OC goes to Mexico filter like this. Oh man, where are we, Juarez? But seriously, a cartel is actually pretty similar to Oh shit, to a he's in Mexico. What the fuck? The difference is a monopoly is- How did he do that, chat? How did he do that? This guy, dude, I didn't know that Climate Town was all about fucking having so much free gas that they could just fucking fly anywhere they want to. He's in fucking Mexico. That's One crazy. One entity that controls the sale of something, and a cartel is a group of entities that agrees to lower the supply or raise the price in order to control the sale of something. So, by the early 1970s, OPEC countries had confiscated oil operations from the private companies running them, and giant government-run OPEC oil companies absolutely dominated the global supply of oil. And when I say dominated, I mean like LeBron James in high school basketball dominated. Finally an opportunity to show the elevation, the windmill, the creativity, the extension. Okay, my favorite channel. <laughs>
See, in the oil game, there's this thing called reserves, which is an estimate of all the oil in the ground waiting to be drilled up. And as of 2018, OPEC countries were sitting on 79.4% of all the oil estimated to be in the ground. And that's actually pretty important because even though America is currently drilling oil as fast as humanly possible, Wait, OPEC on. has a very deep bench. Oh, and one more thing. Um, OPEC recently added a little country called Russia to the cartel. And OPEC, Russia, and a few other countries recently rebranded themselves as OPEC+. Plus. OPEC+, Plus now holds the keys to 90% of all the world's proven oil reserves and 55% of the active oil supply on the global market. Now, OPEC does not control demand but they do get to mess with supply by determining how much oil OPEC countries allow into the market, which can seriously affect the price of oil. In fact, one time in 1973, OPEC was pissed at America. They didn't let America have any oil, and it caused a massive spike in prices and cars lined up around oh, yeah. the block to get gas. No, they did not. Man the no man down the line. Eight o'clock, we were supposed to pump at eight o'clock. It was pandemonium and ask your parents, because apparently they freaked the absolute fuck out, okay? It was like the Red Scare and Y2K had a baby. And if you didn't understand any of that sentence, um, how do I put this? Uh, you're probably going to be the one solving climate change, so thank you. Is the cartel literally an oligopoly? Yes. That is what it is. An oligopoly that operates exactly... I mean, a cartel, yes, is exactly that. It's just multiple uh, competitors coming together and creating a monopoly. Yes. An oligopoly simply is... I mean, oligopoly, technically, there's, like, differences in opinion, but OPEC is is operating in unison thank you so much for your service and uh we're sorry in advance and then after, after thank you for your service and then go and then uh, <laughs> yeah and that's the cut yeah oh uh, anyway opec and the other global oil producers which includes private american companies get to control the supply of oil and based on global demand a per barrel oil price is set now, it's not identical in every country all over the world but since oil is a commodity that can be piped or shipped alarmingly quickly anywhere on the planet, it stays relatively consistent across the globe at any given time. Now remember, gas price volatility is basically just oil price volatility. And oil price volatility happens whenever there are disruptions in the global supply or demand of oil. For instance, when America invaded Iraq in 2003 and disrupted their ability to get oil, the price of gas went up in America. Global markets knew that a country at war might not be able to supply the same amount of oil, so people wanted to stock up on oil as a precaution, causing the demand to go up, causing the price to go up. And yes, this is a gross oversimplification of how it really works. It's really more of a series of feedback loops. Canada said we should invade OPEC plus. Congrats, you just unlocked US foreign policy for the last 50 years. <laughs> Loops that put pressure on the system in different ways as detailed by Danella Meadows in the book Thinking in Systems. Read it if you can. And speaking of a gross oversimplification of how things work, I now present the past 20-ish years of the global oil market. But first, we got I love when someone says, holy shit, you fat ass Americans, just ride a bicycle. Yeah, what a dumbass, dude. Can you imagine not riding a bicycle to work in fucking Los Angeles where your job is like 20 miles away and you just have to simply bike on the highway and get fucking killed by, you know, traffic? Where are the bike lanes, my guy? Where? Where is the, where is the bikeable infrastructure? Where? How are you going to bike 25 fucking miles to work, dude? Hey, Texans, you hear that? Hey, people in Texas, why don't you ride a fucking bike to work? Huh? You fucking dummies? Yeah. It's 110 degrees outside. Why don't you fucking bike to work, stupid Texans? 45 mile drive. Shut up. If you're European, shut the fuck up, okay? Shut your fucking European mouth up. This is a conversation that does not revolve around you, okay? We got our own goddamn problems here, motherfucker. Europeans be like, why don't you bike to work? I don't understand. Just use the lane. Just use your bike lane. That's what it's for, yeah? Biking to work for many people in the United States of America is basically like saying, why don't you take public transit? It fucking doesn't exist, man. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> What the hell? Why don't you just like walk to work and then like take advantage of your robust public uh, transit system? Like, uh, I don't understand it. 
It is true. Americans are fat. Partially because of that, actually. Partially because of our carver line infrastructure that makes it impossible to fucking walk in our non-walkable cities, makes it impossible to fucking uh, utilize public transit, which is non-existent. So, of course, we are more sedentary than the average fucking worker in any other country for that reason. Obviously, that's part of why we're so fucking fat on top of the microplastics that we're consuming, on top of the fucking horrible dog shit food that Europeans wouldn't even serve their own fucking cattle. But, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons, yes. I'm gonna take a trip back to Chart Town, baby. Hot crackers! Oil prices are coming up fast in the early 2000s as instability in the Middle East and the invasion of Iraq reduces OPEC supply and oh no! Here comes Hurricane Katrina absolutely ham yamming the oil refineries in the Gulf Coast. Global supply goes down and what's this? Global demand for oil is sur- Use your privilege. I'm a Canadian though. Use your money to make it better. Use your privilege to make it better. Simply a dumb is the best fucking chatter name I've seen thus far. Because that is the dumbest fu- Yeah, dude, let me just fucking- Oh my god. Let me just undermine the entire hegemonic capitalist structure, okay, that, that has created multi-billion dollar fucking- uh, uh, the, the multi-billion dollar auto industry that has been able to dictate the way that our fucking public infrastructure is extremely car-reliant over the course of the past fucking 100, 200 goddamn years- with what? My fucking Twitch earnings, dude? Why didn't I think of that? I'm so fucking stupid. After all, at the top of the hour, there's a 60-second ad break, and every single time I promote that and then tell you you can avoid those ads uh, by telling you you can fucking subscribe, you end up subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting- <laughs> Yeah, let me just fucking lobby the government against uh, 200 years of- of- uh, of- of- built-in fucking initiatives and, and the way our existence has been centered around cars and how it's a individualist uh, attitude. Uh, cars are freedom. Let me just materialize some fucking railways, dude. Thank you, it's top of the hour for the five gifted subs. Thank you, Bill Vogg, for the 30 gifted subs. There you go. Now I'm, uh, now I'm one step closer to fucking materializing trains. Hold on. Hmm, railroads. Abolishing highways. Destroying them, okay? All of a sudden, I'm... Mm, making the roads smaller and uh, building sidewalks all around Los Angeles. Holy fuck, it's crazy. It's happening. People messaging your fan accounts? I've seen insane Hassan hating weirdos, but I don't know what makes people DM me like I'm Hassan's personal fucking assistant. What do you mean he knows me, dumbass? Hi, Lila. I'm curious how you as a leftist think anything Hassan does is okay in your mind. You do nothing, and before... You say you can't. He has shown that he knows you from memory on stream multiple times. I swear you're the one Hostwit member he has consistently known and interacted with all this time. A nice house for millions. A nice car for thousands. That's not socialism. Just curious. That's awesome. When you go after... I mean, people are just fucking insane, dude. Like, this guy is a fan. Like, this guy is a stan. This guy knows me more than anyone else okay he's in here every day he's just fucking white knuckling he's like oh my god i'm so angry he added just curious again it has to be sarcastic this has to be like satire i think these people are so relentless and make this shit so dreadful i'm a goddamn stan account like i don't know how you deal with this shit on different levels motherfuckers are obsessed with you yeah it's fucking crazy all right, let's continue. Due to the emerging markets in Asia, we've got ourselves a good old-fashioned price increase, friendos. More global tension from North Korea, nuclear testing, Israel, Lebanon at war, and a thousand other problems give oil markets the heebie-jeebies. They want to buy that oil. Demand spikes and oil is $100 a barrel, 120 a barrel, 140 a barrel. Good Charlotte, that's an expensive barrel. And since every major form of transportation and construction is addicted to oil, every government, business, and individual in the world has no choice but to buy that oil at outrageous prices. Companies' budgets are stretched razor thin and any little snap could force them into bankruptcy. But I think things are going to be just fine for the year 2008. Oh no! The U.S. housing market crashes and a global recession tips business after business into bankruptcy. Demand for oil plummets and oil prices crash to $32 a barrel. Things are terrible! But the world economy is clawing its way back and demand increases. Then we've got the Arab Spring and the collapse of Libya taking millions of barrels of oil off the market. Supply goes down. You know what that means. The price of that good old French Kevin just went up. Oh, here comes 
Russia attacking Ukraine in 2014. Supply goes down, prices go up, but wait a minute, what's that sound? It's the fracking boom from the USA, and they're fracking the absolute molasses out of North Dakota and the Permian Basin, flooding the market with oil, but as supply goes up and prices go down, a bunch of those US fracking companies go out of business because fracking isn't profitable and oil is under $60 a barrel. Talk about boom and bust, baby. Plus, it turns out there's a whole bunch of other problems with fracking, and now OPEC is playing chicken with US fracking companies and also a million other factors, and oh my God, what a ride. But if I know my stuff, 2020 is gonna be smooth sailing for ev- And then, knock, knock, it's a global pandemic, and everything shuts down. People aren't flying, people aren't driving, construction projects stop, and the parking lot donut- Bro, you hear a millionaire don't affect you? Brother, a lot doesn't affect me. I'm also white, but I talk about fucking systemic racism. Should I stop doing that as well? I'm also cisgender and heterosexual, but I talk about LGBT discrimination. Should I stop doing that as well? Well, of course, you want me to stop doing that. But, uh, you know, I do use my fucking privilege uh, in every fucking capacity for good. Uh, you know. Hasn't stopped me thus far is placed on the critically endangered list. The world economy stalls, and for the first time ever, the supply and demand of oil was so utterly out of whack that the price of oil went negative for a day. Oh. Oh. But even though oil prices went back into the positive the next day, prices were still so crazy low for gasoline that some places were selling it for 85 cents a gallon. What is this, 1993? <laughs> Seriously though, 2020 looked like bad news for oil companies, but they stopped drilling, they got over $10 billion in government bailouts, and one other thing, was it they like used the money to keep their employees on the payroll? There's, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, it was the opposite of that. They actually fired 100,000 employees. But don't worry, oil companies in 2020 had a better year than they did in 2016. So as 2021 rolled around and a shaky recovery started, oil companies had a choice. They could choose to invest that money in drilling, hire back the people they laid off, and increase supply, or they could not hire those people back, not drill, and restrict supply, forcing oil prices way up. And which one of those things do you think oil companies did? American oil companies did stock buybacks, executive bonuses, and purposely didn't rehire their workforce as a way to- Damn, that's crazy, bro. That's fucking wild. How, who could have foreseen that, dude? I mean, listen. For, uh, for a much smaller labor force, you could make the same amount of money with a much smaller labor force. You could make the same amount of money and profits would actually go even higher. Profits would even, uh, the profit margin would be even better as long as you restrict your supply. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? That's capitalism, baby. It's true. That's literally capitalism. And that's how it's supposed to work, fucking dumbasses that say, oh, the Hassan, shut the fuck up to maximize profits. And of course they did, they're oil companies. This is almost too dumb to say, but oil companies like when oil prices are high. They sell oil for money. And since drilling operations slowed down as a result of the pandemic, they now get to enjoy massive oil profits as they slowly ramp drilling back up. And if you don't believe me, just ask oil companies. Wood Pioneer. Oh yeah, this is my favorite. This is literally one of my favorite fucking uh, uh, videos of all time. We've watched this many times on this broadcast, probably seen it as well. In that scenario, potentially increase production to help make up any potential shortfall. No, uh, Pioneer will stay with our plan. We announced a CapEx plan. As I said, regardless of whether it's $150 oil, $200 oil, or $100 oil, we're not going to change our growth plans. We will continue to prioritize free cash flow generation over the pursuit of volume growth. We have no intention of adding incremental barrels into the market. So if the president phoned you up, Scott, and said, you know what, we need some more oil, what are you going to say to him? I'll tell him we have a pact with our, it's all about the shareholders. Our shareholders own this company. Uh, they want a return of cash. Uh, we know what Biggie Hollabox, Signal Chief's executive, said on Friday that the company has no need and no intent to invest in production growth. Investing for the sake of growth is not what investors want. It's true. It's true. Why would they? Why would they reinvest in production growth when they can make the same profit margin with less oil while you, the consumer, is getting shafted at the fucking gas station? That is capitalism. That is the true nature of capitalism. If you can make 
ten dollars profit putting out uh you know uh, three fucking toys instead of ten dollars profit putting out ten fucking toys obviously you're going to go with the three you're, you're gonna go with the three toys you don't need to you don't need to fucking actually produce more you're making more money that's what you care about you care about fucking increasing shareholder value well, technically, the profit is still the same. You'd be making less profit if you're making 10 toys uh, in that same market. Wait, so you're telling me that if the private stakeholders, that there is a chance companies would do something closer to what's right? Well, companies are never going to do that, which is precisely why you need regulation, which is precisely why you need the government to regulate, okay? And the government already engages in regulation. It's just that when the government interference happens, it only happens at the behest of companies and their profit margins and never at the, on behalf of the interests of the citizens. That's the problem. In America, the government only interferes and helps the shareholders, the capital owners, okay, the, the bourgeois that own these fucking companies rather than the actual citizens themselves. When it comes down to it, and you need to help out the citizens, you need to fucking force these companies that you literally bailed out with our money, with our tax dollars, and tell them, hey, why don't you fucking, instead of engaging in stock buybacks, like, I don't know, produce more fucking oil. They go, nope, not going to do that. And you say, oh, fuck, I can't do anything about it. Someone had a take on that. That man's name was Go Chavez. Weird stuff. And I mean, it's especially weird considering they'll say all that stuff and then they'll immediately run onto Fox News and straight up lie to whoever will listen in order to perpetuate this myth that Biden has some kind of magic button that controls oil prices. And this is all because of the absolute war that the Joe Biden administration has begun to wage on the oil and gas industry. We have no intention of adding barrels <laughs> into the market. Biden's closure uh, of uh, pipelines because of uh, shutting down. Uh, yeah, dude, Keystone, Keystone pipeline, right? Like the pipeline from Canada that was going to bring in Canadian gas into the United States. That's the reason why oil prices are high in America. That's what happened. That's so crazy. It also killed. It also killed jobs, of course famously because uh what is that again how much how many jobs are created uh when you make a pipeline obviously in the process of building the pipeline you have hundreds of jobs that are created but uh how much does it how many jobs do you get over the course of the lifespan of the pipeline how how many oh uh like what two it's a fucking pipeline you built it already it's over there's no more new jobs okay you don't have to like literally go and touch the fucking pipeline every day you don't have a pipeline toucher Two! You're like, fucking maybe ten. <laughs> Fuck. Leases and things like that. We're not going to change our growth plans. Eco-freaks and far-left anti-West academics are making him do whatever they want. Because I love leases. Don't get me wrong. Biden is a real wet sandwich of a president. And there's a lot of stuff to attack him about. But oil prices are not one of them. And then we go to the wind, you know, cars with windmills. The only reason why you should attack Biden, Brandon, whatever you want to fucking call him, the Mac attack, is because he's not aggressive enough in fucking beating the shit out of our, our uh, oil producers. That's it. That's, I, I've, say this, I've said this before, and I will say it again. Brandon should be bullying our, our capitalist overlords, but he is not, because nothing will fundamentally change, Jack. And that would be uh, unacceptable, of course. We're going to make sure that everybody knows Exxon's profits. Why don't you tell them what Exxon's profits were this year, this quarter? Exxon made more money than God this year. And by the way, nothing's changed. And they're not, by the way, one thing I want to say about the oil companies. They talk about how we have, they have 9,000 permits to drill. They're not drilling. It's true. Why aren't they drilling? Because they make more money not producing more oil. It's true. The price goes up, number one. All right, bro. Find the president, dog. Phone him up. You know what I mean? I love that people are like, what are you going to do about the gas prices, Brandon? And he's like, Exxon made a lot of money this year. We got we to gotta phone this president, you know? Make sure. Make sure there's something going on, you know? We got to stop Exxon from uh, focusing on its own profits, you know? 
which, by the way, inherently anti-capitalist, by the way. So, yes, uh, technically, Joe Brandon, left of Lenin, obviously, clearly, once again. People. And I knew that President Biden would be left of center. I never dreamed he'd be left of Lenin. And number two, the reason they're not drilling is they're buying back their own stock, which should be taxed, quite frankly, buying back their own stock and making no new investments. So uh, I, uh, I always thought Republicans are for investment. Exxon, start investing, start paying your taxes. If only I can find the president, I'll have a word with him. Raise it even more, I'll only grind harder. <laughs> <laughs> that's right dude i do some oil gas drilling tidal work in western pa once russian invader uh, russian invasion happened and the prices spike work stopped immediately this is just like uh how would he bully them threaten regulation what power does he have here dude are you kidding me defense production act number one number two jail that's always a sick thing you can do just get fucking authoritarian with it i don't understand you have no problem melting fucking homeless people and like killing them and and pushing them out in the desert but when it comes to one fucking corporate executive going to jail oh my oh my we can't do any of that sweet capital punishment dude why the fuck not jail them all I'm saying is, even if you're not going to fucking throw them in jail, I mean, use the long dick of the law, like threaten over, uh, like threaten regulation. It was like one guy from the 2008 housing crisis, but it wasn't even the right guy. It was like fucking, it was a fall guy. Trump is going to campaign on peace with Russia and oil prices and win easy. Then Republicans will slide the U.S. deeper into fascism. Let's go, Brandon. We literally cannot drill for more oil. We need to cut production, not raises. This is not opinion. It's objective scientific fact regarding climate change and the budgets we have. I, that's, dude, I don't even disagree with you, uh, obviously. Uh, our, our, uh, our, energy, uh, our energy production is over-reliant on, on uh, obviously, gas and oil, fossil fuels in general. And I do think that we should do the other thing, okay? But even with what we currently have, we're not even working with it. Threaten to nationalize oil production, I think, or just do it, actually. How about that? That would be pretty sick. I mean, American companies operate in such a fucking horrifyingly, uh, in such a horrifyingly corrupt manner that you could probably use any number of different things they do on a regular basis as a as a mechanism of enforcement. Um, we talked about the uh, the the loans, right? That they got the unconditional loans that were immediately uh, that were structured in a way that it was supposed to fucking uh, uh, only you were only allowed to have them if you didn't fucking bail out your your uh, workforce. I mean, if you didn't fire your workforce, which they did. Okay, there you go. Hit him where it fucking hurts. Jail an executive. Be like, you, you violated the conditions of this loan. Well, I, or, or be like, hey, remember that those loans that we gave you guys? We're actually going to take it back now. You actually have to pay those loans because uh, you did fire these people. It's like one way. I don't know. There's so many different ways that you could do this, though. Um, say you're going to say you're going to fucking engage in antitrust uh, and trust busting. You don't even have to do it, but like set up a committee. Instead of doing a fucking, you know, January 6th committee, set up a committee within, oh, can you imagine an energy committee investigation into why the oil prices are so high? Who's going to fucking lead it? Joe Manchin? Oh my Lord. Okay. But let's say there were actually, you know, uh, legit fucking uh, non-corrupt politicians. Okay. In a hypothetical scenario. And they got together and they did this like highly publicized energy committee, uh, energy commission that was put together to investigate uh, the deregulation and potentially even trust bust within the energy production industry. That, in my opinion, would probably get some of these fucking producers to at least act in a way that is desirable for the consumers rather than a way that is desirable for the shareholders. But without that kind of even like minute tiny fucking uh, regulatory mechanism of course they're not going to do anything they're going to just say fuck off eat shit and die and bail us out when we need it when our tax money is spent on saving large corporations during economic downturns why don't the government us get to own a portion of said company and slowly but surely nationalize it oh dude <laughs> i mean i said that when it was happening i said that for the airliners too you're right but it's easier to say fuck joe brandon i mean i do say fuck joe brandon i say fuck joe Biden all the time I say fuck Joe Biden because he's not doing this stuff. And this stuff isn't even like international communism now shit, okay? This is like pretty basic stuff that you could do right now. 
Like what I'm talking about <coughs> is <coughs> what I'm talking about right now is what the capitalist American government should be doing and it's not doing. It's bare minimum shit. People always say like, Hassan, you're fucking pie in the sky. Like you're crazy. Uh, shut the fuck up. That's never going to happen. But like the things that I'm mentioning are uh, uh, are, are, are things that like this, com this country should be doing that a reasonable country would do. Yeah, Defense Production Act was just used for baby formula, used for gas. I mean, straight up, I agree. <laughs> but yeah, in the, in the, while we wait for that though, once, listen, once Joe Brandon gets a hold of our president, dude, he, he's going to give him a stern talking to, okay? He's going to he's going to give the president whoever that guy is a stern talking to, brother. Meanwhile, we'll just continue focusing on raising the interest rates, which is one way to combat inflation, that's certainly true. Uh, and, and do absolutely nothing about uh, the, the corporate consolidation of this country that makes it infinitely easier to regulate prices and increase prices without seeing significant, uh, uh, you know, issues down the line. Let me finish. I forgot to finish the video. Seats. Sorry. <laughs> I got Just so a bunch of rascals selling their tank top and spank juice. What could that guy possibly think we're Hold talking on, I'm going to grab that wow. new Mountain Dew I that I've been know. fucking we track waiting on. But you don't actually have to know what tank top and spank juice is to know that gas prices haven't really gone back down to pre-pandemic levels, and that's because the globe's oil suppliers are perfectly fine prioritizing short-term profit over actually increasing supply. Oh, they'll pretend that they're being held down by the man and all these regulations, but that's actually a lie. I made a whole video about this, and it turned out pretty good, so you should consider watching That was a great it. video, but by the way. TLDR we watched that, too. Is that the big dogs like BP, Chevron, ExxonMobil, and Shell are posting record high profits, but spending record low amounts actually drilling and reinvesting. Okay. I'm officially drinking the original Taco Bell Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Baja Blast, which is natural and artificial tropical lime flavor. Okay, we're going to pause midway uh, through this video to give you a Mountain Dew review. All right, let's continue. ...in their company. Couple artificially low supply with supply chain issues and a double dose of inflation and gas prices are just cruising up. And then Russia started threatening Ukraine. And even though they pinky promised that they weren't preparing for some kind of war, oil commodity markets kind of freaked out because it sure looked like they were preparing for some kind of war. They started buying up oil, meaning demand went up, meaning price went up, meaning gas prices shot through the roof. And it turned out, oh man, there was a second roof above that roof. And we discovered that when Russia actually invaded Ukraine and gas prices shot through that roof as well. Global supply shrinks because, you know, war, plus international sanctions against Russia, plus Russia retaliates by withholding exports, plus even more war-related supply problems. So unless you're watching this video in the distant future, that's pretty much where we are today. So the time has come. Who actually controls gas prices? Nobody! And also, kind of everybody at the same time. It's complicated is the point that I'm making here. Look, I just blitzed through 20 years of oil history, and you might have noticed the entire world is addicted to oil. And the fact that 70 plus countries export oil and every country uses oil means that no individual, no matter how powerful, can just sort of step in and change gas prices. Now, I'm not saying nobody can influence gas prices. OPEC Plus and the world's oil majors make their living trying to influence oil and gas prices. But for all the influence LeBron James has over a game of basketball, he doesn't get to actually choose who wins or loses. Remember, billions of people are using oil every day. So even though presidents and world leaders have some minor tools available to them, there's no guarantee what the result of those tools is gonna be. Pandemic bailouts were intended to keep gas prices down, but they resulted in record high profits for oil companies and record high gas prices. The invasion of Iraq was, at least according to our own generals. I think my friend over at Climate Town uh, uh, fails to dream of a better tomorrow because I don't agree with this take. Because technically, uh, as he described throughout the entire fucking video, there are numerous points of control and uh, a government that actually does want to, especially in the United States of America, a government that actually does want to could technically force the hands of a lot of these other places. As he also mentioned, America invading numerous other fucking countries, oil producing countries, has been one method of control.
of course, that control only benefited the, the oil and gas giants, uh, ultimately. To secure Iraq's oil fields. But prices spiked anyway. The oil market is a complex system, and complex systems by their very nature are impossible to predict. But it's not hard to see how much oil companies benefit from the whole globe being completely addicted to fossil fuels. So the next time you pull up to the gas pump and prices are high, which let's face it, it's probably right now, just ask yourself one question. Who actually benefits from high gas prices? Is it the companies that sell gas and make a big profit off high prices? Or just the most recent winner of the Tostitos US presidential election? Cause as unfortunate as it is, global oil prices and gas prices by extension are almost completely governed by global demand plus whatever global suppliers think they can get away with. Which as- I mean, that's a big part of it though. Whatever global suppliers think they can get away with could be completely dictated by a functioning, competent, and even fucking, dare I say, capitalist government, okay? It would be a capitalist government operating at the behest of the people rather than uh, corporate profits, of course, which is inherently an anti-capitalist action. But governments do stuff like that all the time or have done stuff like that throughout time and should do stuff like that more, actually. So, yes... Uh, if you are incapable of seeing it uh, from the perspective of like, uh, I don't know, if you're, if you're trapped in like a liberal institutionalist uh, idealist perspective, then yeah, it's impossible. It's like, oh, this is just the markets operating in the way that it does. But like we as human beings are capable of overcoming uh, the, the markets, especially governments are capable of doing that. As it turns out, is quite a lot. And the only way out of this rigged system is to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. The only way to do that is a complete all system switch to electrification. Dude, what the fuck is, oh my God, dude. Okay, that, what he's describing there is literally harder than fucking the government regulating, uh, the government actually at the very least threatening fucking uh, uh, corporate shareholders. You know what I mean? I don't disagree with him. I do agree with him on this, but if you can imagine a fucking better tomorrow where we are not uh, hyper-reliant on fucking oil and gas, and uh, we have done so, we have moved uh, successfully away from our reliance on oil and gas and fossil fuel industry, then you should be able to also imagine a today where the government can do some things to, to change the prices. Yes, but a reduction in oil is necessary, not low oil prices. I mean, I don't disagree with it. I'm just saying that, like, this is far more broad reaching and has a much larger scope than the other thing I'm mentioning. And of course, before somebody jumps on to tell me that sometimes electricity is made using fossil fuels, I fucking know that, okay? There's more than one problem with the world. I also think electricity should be made using renewable energy. And if you're interested in ways you can get involved, there are a whole bunch of links in the bio to groups focused on greening the power grid and general electrification. I highly encourage you to join some of these groups, but above all, just consider getting more educated about the climate crisis, links in the bio, but this isn't a video about that. It was just a video about who controls gas prices, and I hope you came away with it. I don't it. know, man, now that there are more options, the Tesla is becoming more attractive. What do you you mean EVs? You think EVs are the only reason? Like that's not the only place we're using oil and and, and gas, by the way, and petroleum uh, and all of that good stuff. I mean, we use it in fucking plastics and shit. What are you talking about? EVs are not the only reason why uh, we have not been able to shift away from our our uh, you know uh, fossil fuel reliant economy. You're still you're still dreaming of a fucking future that has the same bare bones that are car reliant, for example. That's a major problem. And Climate Town would not agree with you on that point either, by the way. It's annoying when California voters complain about gas prices due to the gas tax as opposed to corporate greed. Why can't we use nuclear energy until renewable energy research reaches a point where renewable energy is as efficient and as reliable as fossil fuels? I'm not a nuclear Ned, by the way, I mean, nuclear energy is also incredibly complicated to build right now. A, a robust infrastructure for nuclear energy would also take like at least a fucking decade. So then you're pushing back technically uh, uh, renewable energy if you don't consider uh, nukes to be a part of renewable energy, which it kind of technically isn't because nuclear waste is not all that easy to solve, even though all the nuclear Andes are going to get mad at me and say that nuclear waste is not that big of a problem. Um, you're still, you're, you know, you're still utilizing uh you're, you're still pushing back renewable energy but not only that 
But also, here's another fucking horrifying reality. It doesn't matter where we're going because even the renewable energy is slowly but surely being overtaken by the fossil fuel industry, purchasing as many fucking renewable energy initiatives and companies as possible as a way to fucking hedge their bets and also halt progress in the renewable sector as best as they possibly can while simultaneously using it as a fucking brownie point PR talking point like Shell being like, oh, look at us. We're doing renewable energy initiatives, actually. So in the short term, they're using it as a marketing component. But in the long term, the real reason why they're, uh, you know, purchasing as many renewable energy uh, uh, companies as possible is because they recognize that they are operating on a finite resource that the world can't rely on for the rest of uh, uh, time. So they are trying to, at the very least, like max out their profits while, uh, while they still can. And also slowing progress as best as possible on the renewable side. The only way to potentially uh, change the system is by. The only way to potentially change the system is not necessarily by saying like, oh, we just need to do renewable energy, but we have to have a mechanism of control. The way that our government currently works, the way that our economy currently works, unfortunately, is always going to benefit capital owners. Okay. The only way to do that is by creating labor power, creating working power, worker power. You need, to, you need to drastically undermine the current hegemonic structure and rebuild it slowly but surely. It's the same concept as like UBI, for example. It was too late to change the system. That's not the case at all. That's crazy. Might not like it, but maybe if we have multiple rich people like Elon Musk, then maybe we would get into renewable faster. Wait, what? Dude, Elon Musk is a perfect example, actually, as a matter of fact, of like someone who purely works on government subsidies, okay? That is a great example of exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it's the same fucking uh, oil baron mentality, but this time, uh, uh, just a guy who is like trying to fucking push for renewable energy. Elon Musk is currently uh, also refusing to uh, in all of his like magnanimous, mag in his magnanimous nature for all of his like fucking charitability that he gets from so many people. Right. And, and how awesome he is, right. That everyone thinks he's so fucking awesome. He's saving the planet has still not opened up fucking fast charging locations for every single electric vehicle. If you, if he truly cared, if he truly cared about magnanimity, that's the word. If he truly cared about like building a better future, building a better tomorrow, all the fucking Tesla fast charging stations would be able to fast charge every fucking electric vehicle out there. It is currently speculated that the current uranium supplies would last 230 years at current consumption rates. Seems like more than enough time to figure out renewables. Elon tried that solar shit, and as soon as the California subsidy dried up, he gutted the company and cut it up like a butcher. He gave up. His only patent is on a special adapter for charging stations that only allows Teslas to. Yeah. Yes, his only patent is the latch preventing other cars from using Tesla stations. <laughs> I know. Like, it is mind-boggling to me that we do not have universal charging. Like, can you, that's, that's insane. We don't have universal charging and the fucking main guy who's supposed to be the champion of electric vehicles is not pushing for that? Come on, why is he not pushing for that? Because it doesn't make him money conclusion that it's nobody because the system is too complicated but it's not a system we should be involved in so we should move away from it as soon as possible and that is the end of the video thank you so much. eu tesla chargers can charge other evs us standard took too long to implement so tesla made their connector before standard existed but there's a cc's adapter coming yeah i know except eu tesla chargers can't charge all other evs across the board in every eu nation if i'm not mistaken only in places where they've actually forced elon musk to, to put universal uh, universal charging in Tesla charging stations like Norway. And even then, it's like still limited. That's just human nature, though. Some people won't push stuff like that without some form of personal gain. No, no one will push for that. It's just, it's literally just, or uh, Europe. When I say Norway, I mean Europe, Europe. And now they're doing it. They're Now they're doing it in other places too, but only doing it because the government said, fuck you, you have to do this. We haven't done that fuck you you have to do this here in america 
It also, if I'm not mistaken, exists in uh, in in China too, right? Tesla uses the same Menicus connector in EU, and they're rolling out non-Tesla supercharging to more countries right now. Yeah, I wonder how that happened. I don't get the shit. We're told that we're under an existential climate crisis, and we have to act now with urgency. And then people say what you just did, and surely but slowly change the hegemonic structures. Exactly how does this work? Seems like a tad contradictory. Well, I'm also operating within what is possible. While I recognize the importance of acting swiftly, I also understand that, especially if you want to be able to operate within the system without, like, I don't know, going to jail, being banned, not having your fucking speech be curved back dramatically, you still have to operate within the current existing structure. I also don't think that we have an infrastructure or a mechanism to fucking push back against the current hegemonic uh, status, which is why I think... You know, there is a there's a way to build that slowly and we haven't gotten there yet. Okay.